let's go on. I have prepared some more interesting examples for you, just to help you master the golden ratio compositional rule. Well, you know the approach already. We make analysis of some of my photos. On this way, your eye is getting used to how the objects are located. You do also know what to search for when you compose your own frames. Here's an interesting example, and I'd want to start with a little bit deeper analysis. I do believe that this will help you understand the concept thoroughly. Think first why the frame is captured on this way, where the accent is, what the idea is. Step by step, let's keep on moving. First, we are applying the golden ratio. Take a look at the crossing points, and on this one, here, more precisely. This is the end of the underground carriage, exactly. Because of the perspective here, because of the location of the object, you can feel the dynamics in the frame. All of the lines going into that direction add to the dynamics of the scene. Well, take a look at the curve we have here. Quite not by chance, really, as you guess. It seems to go around the carriage, right? Next step. The blue line. It's important now. You see, there are two different geometrical figures here. The frame is composed exactly on a way to show them. Marked by this blue line, you have a completely different component, in fact. The underground is a different subject in the photo. That's what's interesting here. It's the leading, the one that moves, the one that brings dynamics in. By contrast, the people look at them. They are static. The train, you see, is located exactly within this rectangle. The rectangle works as a frame, something which is pretty, pretty cool, really, in terms of composition. If you still have any doubts, this is what we did. This is how the space on our frame is separated. Geometry, as you know, is a great friend to a photographer, just to know how to play with it. Geometry creates pleasant shapes for the eye. Even if somebody does not understand why they like something, well, the important part is that they like it. It happens thanks to your composition and to the geometry you successfully play with. So it's worth paying attention to that one. You've seen this photo already. I'd want to use it here again to show you one trick. Yeah, something new. In fact, as you notice, everything that I explain, everything that I show is based on personal examples and personal experience. This is something I believe that's really important for you and will help you advance a lot. Let me show you now how you to understand if the composition is good or not. If you are a complete beginner, it could be a little bit more difficult for you to understand who is where and why. At first sight, four people, right? Each of them has a role. Try to analyze the photo for yourselves first. Who of them is the leading one? Who is located on the crossing points? Pause it and let's get started. Starting with these two men, you can see they are on the crossing points. Yeah, there is no diagonal here, I do absolutely agree. But you know already that diagonal is not always necessary in order to have a pretty good composition. Time for the trick. It's of great help when you are not sure if the composition is good. There are two options. 
to use your eyes only or to use Photoshop. With your eyes, you need to imagine how to close them and defocus the picture. You did it? All right. If you prefer to use Photoshop, this is the effect you may apply. I guess you haven't seen a photo of yours like this before. This effect may really help you a lot. Let's see what's going on now. When you apply this effect, you may easily distinguish what is really important in the photo. This is our aim. Now, there are no distractions. Nothing that will stop you from focusing on the main object. You see? It's a different story. Just for contrast, check how many distractions you have here, from snowflakes to trees and houses. If you apply the golden ratio now, well, there are absolutely no doubts already what the roles of the figures in the composition is. One more trick. Yeah, that's not everything. This one, this trick, is used by painters mainly. Let me explain. A painter is going to draw a landscape. Just an example, okay? The original canvas, for example again, is meter per meter. Before starting to draw on the original canvas, the painter prepares a draft. He uses a small piece of paper, for example 15 per 15 centimeters. Well, in this draft paper, you will not find any details. Imagine it, just the leading objects, just the general schemes, spots, lines, triangles, something as what we've just created. The idea is to see how the overall picture will look together, how the composition will be structured. It's a cool trick. I hope you take advantage of it. The last step, of course, is the one on which the painter adds the details. Two examples, two different approaches. I hope and believe in that, in fact, they were useful for you. And I'll be really happy if you start applying the things I'm telling you about in your photography. Yeah, and if you share your stories. Let's move on. Time? for the next lesson.